Hi, Kevin. Uh, greetings, uh, Ritesh Raj. You're the Chief Operating Officer at Cuddly Nest. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today at Focus Wire Pulse. So uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you is that you are one of the, um, if we can call it this, newer entrants into the uh, the alternative accommodation short-term rental space. And we thought it'd be quite interesting to get some perspective on your experience so far as a newcomer into the, or a newbie, as we've called you here, you know, a newcomer into, into the sector. And given that there is so much competition, albeit there is a lot of interest, as we were explaining in our intro earlier, but you know, how have you thought as, an, as a new entrant about something as, as important as customer acquisition, first of all? I think customer acquisition is really important, but um, what we really try to focus on is that we wanted to really um, make sure that uh, people can feel that they are loyal to a certain brand, but uh, loyalty um, uh, without having to make sure the pricing is correct is not really relevant. So what we focused on is really making sure that our prices are lower than any other, any other competitor in the market as an OTA. And we really focus on pricing as our main factor. So we try to um, lower our commissions as much as possible to really make sure that the collective uh, uh, price or the fees is lower than anybody else out there. So pricing is, is the most important factor, I would say, for customer acquisition for me. Of course, the user experience and, experience and user interface, all of that really matters, but we keep evolving and pivoting and all that. But initially, pricing, pricing, pricing is the most important, according to us. One of the uh, the big, um, maybe selling point is the wrong word, but you talk a lot on the site about, and I quote, the end of messy searches. What 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 is what is that exactly? And how does is that just a marketing slogan, or what are you doing to end messy searches? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to connect there. So, um, so okay, we are currently in our growth phase at the moment. So. Uh, what we really intend to build is a platform that has larger selection of all accommodation types. So hotels, hostels, vacation homes of all types. And end of messy searches is, is basically where you can choose and pick from different types of um, amenities out there available. So we try to pre-package some amenities based on the location that where you are. If we are really targeting these days on domestic travel, we try to compile a few most um, most sellable amenities that people look for. Mm -hmm. That's basically uh, what we're doing with that section. And of course, we'll improve it with time. Yeah. Okay. So as important as customer acquisition is, in the vacation rental game, owner acquisition is perhaps of equal or greater importance. So how have you kind of considered your strategy around just getting inventory yeah, so um, I will definitely talk about vacation rental. Uh, absolutely, yes, but that's one of the verticals that we consider. We have literally every vertical of accommodation that's yeah. out there. So for vacation rentals, there are, there are three things we have focused on, and we have not really talked much about it, but I'm going to share a few points here. Uh, the first point is we have uh, built one of its kind model. It's called the booking fee sharing model, where we allow the property owners or the property managers to choose what part of commission they want to shoulder with us. So for example, we charge a total commission of 12%. That is a combination of traveler and property owner or the manager. And the property manager, depending on the seasonality, they can choose what part of 12% they want to pay and the rest goes to traveler. So that's one of its kind model that is there. So let's say there's a high season and you're not able to um, sell or you were able to sell a lot that you know of already and you don't want to pay an ota 10 percent or 12 percent or 15 percent so you can just say okay i want to pay in high season two percent and the 10 percent goes to let's say a uh, traveler but we eventually make our 12 percent no matter what and vice versa for low seasons where you are not getting much bookings because the demand is less of course and you try to just you know take as much as you can of 12 percent so this goes to travelers 
It, it, it's interesting, though, because uh, owners are often encouraged to list on multiple platforms. So how does that work if you've got your own unique kind of model, but they want to also list on Verbo or Airbnb or any others? I mean, or do you insist, if you can, on some kind of exclusivity through Cuddly Nest? Well, uh, we definitely um, give them the opportunity to be able to uh, be um, uh, able to control the pricing because they control the commission. Uh, we give this right to the property owner, definitely, yes. Um, as the new entrance or the newbie, you call it here, uh, we, we, we are uh, launching a program called the Cuddling as Cure program that comes around um, holidays uh, later this year, where we are going to be offering, um, you know, uh, 18 months of no booking. You don't have to pay any booking fee for 18 months if you are a single property owner or you manage, let's say, one more property apart from where you live as a real second home. So we really want to stress on this real second home. And I, I'm sure you, you're very much uh, aware of what I mean by re real second home, not a yep. staged home, not a home that has been just prepped for a specific purpose. So we really want to empower individual owners to really save their bucks so they can really focus on increasing their revenue and you know doing what they want to do with it rather than giving it away to all two OTAs and booking fees. Okay, so you are a newcomer. You, um, I think you've raised, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure that it's around 10 million in funding so far, the most recent yes. being in late 2020, around six correct. million. Correct, correct. How, how have you approached capital raising given that the market is busy in terms of the number of uh, uh, players like yourselves that there are in the sector now? What's your kind of strategy around raising money? Just talk us through that with a particular, I think, because we've got a session coming up later where we talk about the state of startups in short-term rentals. But, you know, it's never easy to raise money, but there does seem to be money kicking about. So how have you approached it? Uh, sure. Uh, before I get there, I must say that there will be news coming up next week where we have raised a new round of funding just last, just about 10 days back. So the news coming up soon next week. Um, we'll right. we'll um, you know keep you um, posted on that. So about our previous funding. Um, so me and my co-founder hype him. Uh, so I've been in travel tech for about uh, over twelve years now. Hypem has been in um, you know serving with Big Four for about three decades in financial. Uh, so we have we both have been uh, really uh, able to have enough um, good uh, network around the world to be able to have these um, angel funding. So uh, funding is not really a problem. We are a very well-funded company. Uh, we have a clear runway for the next three years, irrespective of the state of um, uh, the entire world that I really hope it is getting better and better with time. Um, so we have really focused on our um, you know, friends and family and some really uh, well-chosen angel investors. Okay, so you're lucky in some respects that there have been a lot of brands that have come along before you, um, you know, and we don't need to just constantly talk about Airbnb, although they are on the session after us. So I suppose we should tee them up a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I think what, 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 what have you learned from the likes of Airbnb, even longer time, Verbo and HomeAway as it used to be, or we used to have to call it, and all the others? What did you learn from them in the run up to you launching? Sure. So, I mean, again, we are still talking about vacation rentals, I would say here. Yeah. So I'm going to just stay on that particular vertical of our accommodation offering. Yeah. Um, I have seen how Verbo used to be in the past and how they have evolved so much. I'm not sure if you have seen them in, um, you know, 2005, 6, 7, when there was a huge US map on the top. And then you have this, all these little states you click on and <laughs> you go and see properties in the small thumbnail photos. So I've seen how they've evolved. So I can say that um, uh, Airbnb, Verbo, um, HomeAway earlier, they're all really great um, companies to learn from. Uh, I really like how they have influenced uh, um, travelers' decisions based on uh, the kind of photos that they have. Um, how, how clean the interface is. They have really worked so hard. I mean, of course, I mean, there's a huge team of, uh, um, you know, uh, professionals and a big count that they have, of course, at this stage of the, of the company already, that definitely helps to feel it f faster. But yeah, a lot of learning from the design-led sort of um, entire structure is, 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 is pretty impressive. Um, mm -hmm. Though I feel that 
we had this accessibility of data, I would say, around uh, you know what are the travel trends and then where does traveler go, what is the inbound traffic coming in from. So all this data was also pretty much there in the past, but. I feel that during pandemic, or like if I'm allowed to say post pandemic, um, those data, if not completely irrelevant, they have really gone down to ground. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't know what to do with the data that somebody has been going from this country to this country of this agent spends some money. That has changed. The regulations have changed. There are a lot of variables now. So there's a lot of good learning. I really um, learned a lot from them. but. Personally, also being able to travel to all these uh, 100 countries around the world or more now, I've really lived in different types of accommodations, really gather as much um, you know, um, information from peer travelers and, and using every platform basically available in the world. In OT, I've literally used every platform multiple times. So uh, there's a lot of learning from them. Um, they have a perceived value eventually the, the the certain value that people perceive out of them um, and we are trying to create one now so we just want to make sure people understand that uh, we are not here to question anyone we want to build a platform that is literally built by travelers we want to make sure that we offer the best pricing of all accommodation types out there in the world basically uh, I'm, I'm sure they're very very grateful for all the business that you've given them over the years but uh, i mean last of all if we can uh ritesh i mean if there are many people watching this now that are, as you were four or five years ago, entering the sector, what would be the number one bit of advice that you would give them? As in to enter the sector or an OTA, you mean? Or Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, I would say that um, they should really try to um, build a product that is, can go to the market fast. I would say that, definitely, yes and try to focus on um, though you know raising money is great of course but we should try to really limit that as much as possible and try to really build a self uh, um, you know sort of like a self company where it can itself generate money really fast so you don't have to depend on somebody else's money so you can make decisions faster and you can sort of like stay agile and, and smaller teams if you can Okay. Um, looking forward to hearing the news next week. Don't forget about letting us know about yes. that. But uh, uh, coming up next is uh, Linda Fox is back talking to Chris Lahane of uh, Airbnb. Okay. But most importantly, Ritesh Raj from Cuddliness. Thank you very much for joining us on Focus Wire. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks a lot. Thank you.